All right. Wagwan. In case you're just joining us, Karibu Sana to the program. My name is Jen Mamboye Kamakawaida. We are glad you choose to start your morning with us right here on Good Morning Kenya. We'd absolutely love to know where you're watching us from. So do talk to us using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Check in. I will be getting to them in a bit. Of course, the official station handle ever remains to be at KBC Channel 1 across the socials. My handle is at Jane Wamboye across all the social media platforms as well. Sir Albert, thank you so much for staying with us. As always, a beautiful Monday. Glad you are watching us from Lamu. Uh, Kamaun Dirima, brightest day to you too. Thank you for staying tuned. Nyamu, uh, that is the Daniel uh, Nyanje. I hope I said that right. Good morning. Good morning to you. We also have Wesley Kimutai. Thank you so much for staying with us. Mwambure um, nilikuwa nimekuona pale. We have the master. Anasema at least as the reggae noises will cease for good. This is in line with in the headlines that that particular conversation about BBI and the referendum question. Omaset Samson, Diani Ukunda Eco Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. William Mamburi Kamake following very closely um, the program. Doreen, I see you are in red. Valentine's is shock of Kiasio. Alikwame Kuhata Videli. Videngeras. Thank you for tuning in. Ali Wafula, good morning, Kenya, watching from Busia. We absolutely appreciate you. And of course, Kiplagat Kitur, Asante Sana for staying with us. Do continue with us up until we get to the end of this particular conversation. So right now, we want to get started with our family conversation for today. And as I had mentioned earlier, today we're going to be talking about fatherhood and what fatherhood is in a nutshell i have two guests with me in studio to just help me with this particular conversation i'll start with the only gent with us in studio this morning he is jeff ndindi who is a social media content creator at present fatherhood karibu sana jeff ah uh, sandy thank you for making time to be with us this morning <coughs> We also have Rachel Bogo, who's also a social media uh, content creator, also working uh, with a motherhood website, and their website is called uh, Thriving Supermama. Hi, Rachel. Hi, hi, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the program. We're glad you guys made time to be with us today. Thank you. And of course, you at home welcome your questions questions, comments, clarifications, muhahe, we welcome all that to be part of this conversation. So let me start with you, Rachel. Maybe you could give us your social media handle so that uh, your followers can also contribute to this conversation. Our viewers can also interact with you on that platform. Okay. Uh, my social media handle is at Rachel Bogo. That's mm -hmm. my personal one. And for the website, it's at Thriving Supermama all across Facebook, Instagram, and the website, of course. All right. Jeff? Uh, okay, thank you, Jane. Uh, for my, for me, it is uh, Present Fatherhood uh, YouTube, uh, Present Fatherhood uh, Instagram, and uh, Present Fatherhood Facebook. All right, so yeah. there you have it. So if you do follow them and you want to be part of this conversation or you want to address them on a more personal level, you can always reach out on their social platforms. So let's just dive right into it. And given, Jeff, you're the only gent with us in studio this morning, Definitely. I want to start with you. When we talk about fatherhood, what does that mean for you? What, how does it resonate with you? Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, when you, when you, you mention the word fatherhood to me, it brings a lot of uh, emotions mm -hmm. because uh, one, I have grown up without one. Uh, they, they passed on when I was still very young. Mm -hmm. And so I've realized, I've actually grown up uh, experiencing the lack of a father in my life. And that's yes. why uh, fatherhood is very close to my heart. Because uh, I, was, I was mentioning uh, the other day to my wife, who is today here in the studio with me, that, uh, that as the simple, simple task as, uh, as just putting the coat on the hanger, is th there are things that you learn from your father. Mm -hmm. you know? And these are things that I never experienced uh, growing up. And that's why now, uh, as a father myself, um, I, I tend to... To be, to be very passionate about it. Yes. Yeah. Now, let me come to you, Rachel. You mm -hmm. know, when we talk about fatherhood, there's always this notion that girls are so close with their fathers yeah. and daughters and our sons are closer with their mothers. Yeah. But for you as a woman, mm -hmm. what does fatherhood mean for you before you get to you as a parent? 
Uh, okay, so I, unlike Jeff, I have grown up with a present dad, mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy that he has been really present. We are ma most of us are the daughters, and for sure, uh, I have really experienced the bond between daughter and dad and a present dad mm -hmm. so for sure fatherhood for me has meant that presence that consistent closeness from a man figure and actually it has created a, or rather it did as I was growing up mm -hmm. watching my dad it created an idea of what kind of man would I like what kind of uh, traits would I like to borrow in the case that I get married and I think for sure I did use his checklist mm -hmm. to make my choice you had a reference spouse. point <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Now, let me come back to you, Jeff. You know, you have been open about the fact that, you know, you lost your father at a young age and did not get to grow up with that. Do you think that has a direct relationship with how you are as a father? Uh, uh, well, I think fatherhood is not something that uh, can be taught in school, mm -hmm. unfortunately. This is something that you learn by, by seeing, by observing somebody being a father. And that's why if you had a bad father, the chances of you becoming a bad father are very high. And me growing, it is even worse when you grow up without one. And me growing up without one, it, it made, made me be intentional about wanting to be a good father. Mm -hmm. And that, me, that meant me going to read thoroughly, mm -hmm. uh, researching about fatherhood, uh, identifying male, male figures in the community who I, I would want to emulate, and therefore be intentional in, in researching their life. How are they living? so that I can emulate and be the type of father that they, they are. Okay, now we've had this conversation and it's something that has been there for so long where we're having single parent households and in most cases you find that it, the single parent in uh, most of these households are mothers and yet the fathers to these children are not deceased, some are just, you know, absent. Now it has been termed as a crisis, you know, absentee fathers have been termed as a crisis and let me come to you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Looking at this issue as fathers who are alive but they are absent in their kids, from a very personal point of things, from your interaction with your partner and your experience with your father growing up, what do you think could be contributing to this crisis that we are seeing of absent fathers in, and especially the younger generation? Yeah, um, well, agreeably, it is a huge crisis mm -hmm. and well, I think when you come to look at it as what are the reasons or what are the contributing factors really that lead to um, absentee fatherhood, one, it could be just from the basis of the boy child and how they are brought up because fatherhood and present fatherhood rather is an issue of taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is a primal um, decision that somebody has to make uh, that is deeply rooted in decision making and taking responsibility. So based on how you grew up, however you were able to be taught into making uh, choices that are, or rather making decisions of saying yes or taking responsibility for your actions, then therefore you're more likely to become a present father when you become one. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether you were brought up in a single home or however your circumstances were, okay. or when you find yourself in a you know, mix up situation that maybe your girlfriend has got pregnant and you need to own up to that. Mm -hmm. But if you if you decide to not, because it's a choice, okay, if you decide to not, one of the key reasons is people fear, I think, a lot. Uh, they fear the pressure of men is on their finances. Mm. Like, how am I as a man? That's what I think. I'm not a man, but that's what I think. Of course, most men, when you, you look at the spectrum of what they think uh, the women contribute, they may think that this woman is stressing me and therefore I do not need to be a present dad, really. Okay. Right. Now, you've mentioned some things that I want us to address individually, and yeah. I want to come back to you, Jeff, with the first thing that she started with, and this is the role of upbringing in some of these fathers who are absent in their children's life. And looking at you, Jeff, you have just yeah. mentioned that your father wasn't there when you are growing, and it yes. may, in turn, made you want to be intentional with your presence in your children's life. Yes. The role of upbringing when it comes to the question of fatherhood, yeah. Does it have that direct link to other fathers consequently being absent to their children because their fathers were not there? Uh, that is a definite yes, uh, because uh, you can't you can't 
experience what you haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if your father was not present in your life and you, you, you thus were not intentional about wanting to be present, then uh, there are high chances that when you are faced with that, uh, that, that, um, that, uh, that when that time comes for you to be a dad, yes. you're most likely to take off and, and just be scared, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the reasons for being scared are, are so many, and one, one, one of them she mentioned that, that people, people worry about finances especially. Yeah. And the second thing that people worry about most is commitment. Mm. <laughs> people, people are like, um, maybe it was uh, what they call a one night stand and they're like, I don't think this woman is the, is the one for me, which I find to be really, <laughs> really off because for you to be able to, to, to engage in a sexual uh, relationship with, with a woman, mm -hmm. it means that there was a connection. It, mm -hmm. it, even if it was a one night stand, there was something that, because for me, that, I'm speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I can't just go in, a, in, a, in, a, in that kind of engagement with somebody that I'm not connected with. And yes. if you are connected, then you should be able to, to commit to that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> most people call it baby mama drama. Yeah. And that is also something that I found to be a reason as to why there was a survey that I was going over and it was one of the reasons as to why some men yeah. choose to stay away from their children, baby mama drama. And let me come to you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you think such has to yeah. absentee fathers that we are seeing today. The children's mother actually contribute to this whole conversation mm -hmm. of absent fathers. Yeah, uh, well, for sure, I'm a woman, so definitely I know the drama that somebody Wake can and cause. <laughs> and that I have also caused drama to my husband anyway. Yeah. So I think it's really a factor. Mm -hmm. um, but even so, um, when a father is there for using that as an escape route, I think the problem is not really about the drama. The problem is they, both of them don't have good conflict resolution methods. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe uh, the lady could be dramatic, uh, but you know, I, I don't really know how dramatic could it really be. If it's somebody who's dramatic, probably you people need to sit down and think about what are the conflict resolution methods that can actually help you, you know, weight off that drama and therefore also make you make the dad not use that as an excuse per yeah. se. I, yeah. just, I, just, I just wanted to, to say something about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually think that, that uh, baby mama drama actually contribute to men escaping. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and To a and huge percentage? To a very huge percentage mm -hmm. because uh, I don't, you know when, when, when you are expecting a child already you are faced with a lot of stress as a man mm -hmm. and majorly financial stress and you are thinking about this is a life that I have to take care of for a lifetime. And here you have a woman who probably is going through postpartum stress and uh, fa family stress as well and mm -hmm. is, she's worried about stability and therefore she, she will actually bring you stress. And as a, as a man, I actually, I actually believe that many men are actually pushed away by this kind of dramas. Yeah, and that reminds me of this incident. I don't know if you had seen it some time back on Instagram where this lady um, chopped off her daughter's braids because the father had taken her to a salon that she doesn't take her mm -hmm. because she's the only one who does her children's hair, her mm -hmm. daughter's hair for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, look. As a man, and this is to you, Jeff, as yeah. a man, is there a point to which you draw that line that as long as I'm the father to this child, all other issues are non-issues? The fact that I'm the father to this little girl or boy is all that I need to be present in their lives, as opposed to the baby mama drama that you may be getting at the same time. <laughs> that can be true. but. But we don't live in a vacuum. Yeah. Yes, you need, you need factors to thrive in a, in a certain environment. So if your environment is hostile, whenever, however much you want to be present, you will not be present. And uh, again, it takes two to tango. And, uh, and especially so in the baby making scheme, mm. it takes two people. So if one party is not willing to, to, to allow the other party to be present, then your efforts will, will be fruitile. And we've seen example even in, a, in, in, a, in a one of some of our celebrities around who wanted to be present and the, the drama has just been too much that the other has not been present. So 
uh, as much as the father may want to be there, the woman must also allow allow that to happen. So it, you don't ha it, you cannot exist in a vacuum. Yeah. You cannot exist in a vacuum. And yeah. Rachel, mm -hmm. looking at this aspect of baby mama drama, yeah. as a woman, how do you feel about it? The fact that some women are intentional in frustrating their children's father and consequently mm -hmm. the man chooses to up and go and then you blame him again for being an absent dad. Yeah, I'll be very honest uh, that one, as a woman, because we are the carrier of the kids, mm -hmm. honestly, we do bear the huge blunt in the baby making scheme, as yeah. Jeff mentioned. And I think one of the causes of baby drama is just that it's, it's just, um, it's the right message, but diverted or communicated in the wrong form of energy. Mm -hmm. Because maybe this lady is trying to, to, to draw your attention, but not using the right way. You know, maybe they're trying to communicate that you, you know, you need to, you know, help in the financial aspect or become emotionally sensitive with the lady. Because I think women do respond positively when they are watered well. Yes. Okay, so baby drama doesn't necessarily come from the blues. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really a consequence of how the man is also not being able to treat this lady prim, prim, primarily well. Okay, Yeah. now tying baby mama drama to teen parenthood. Um, for those who have been in that situation where you got pregnant young, both the lady and the gent, and consequently you are both not mature enough to some extent, you know, mtoto kuliam toto, mm -hmm. and you find that that stresses the relationship. And again, your question here, yeah, maybe she wasn't the right person for me, mm -hmm. but we are, choices have consequences, so for we sure. should be very careful about that, you know, don't be a victim of circumstances. Let me come to you, Jeff. Yeah. Also the fact that some people get pregnant young and in the long run, they come to discover that, hey, Mimi, watoto, apana. Do you think this also has a huge role to absent fathers? Um, because we're living in a time where people are actively saying, me, I don't want kids. They get to the age of 25, 30, and they're like, oh, no, me, I don't want kids. But they come to realize that when they already have a kid. Do you think that has a role to play in this state of absentee fathers? Oh, I think you should have realized <laughs> that you didn't want to be a father right from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like, for example, myself, I, wa I knew I wanted to be a dad from age 12. Mm -hmm. I already knew the kind of dad I wanted to be, and I already knew what I had to do to be that kind of father. Yes. So, and of course, I want, I want, to, I want to give them some, cut them some slack because people, people mature differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe I matured earlier. <laughs> but if, if, if for those who probably got the, the kid when they were so young and they, they didn't know what life is all about, and then they reach to a point where now, oh, uh, I've, I've, I've known who I am, and now I don't want to be to be to be a father. Yes. I think I have a problem with with people. First, I, have a, I think I have a problem with people who who, who, who don't want to have kids. <laughs> uh, well, that's a personal preference. I know, I know, I know. It's a it's a, it's a controversial statement, which <laughs> but but it's a personal choice. But um, because generally we are we are we are built with with that innate nature to to want to procreate mm -hmm. and to want to con to, con uh, to uh, extend our lineage and our name and all those stuff yeah so it's it's still hard for me to understand that there's somebody who will not want that but again uh god calls us for different purposes in life and maybe your purpose will be will be to to just be single and 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 in that way you'll be able to to, to fulfill that purpose. Even I think for those who, who are Christians, the Bible says so, that it gives, it gives that choice for either to be single or to be married. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if you got that child, I know that also happened for a reason. And uh, you can't get to a point where you s decide that, that, that now I don't have, want to have kids and therefore you push away the kid that you already had and that responsibility. Yeah. I think you should take up that responsibility and of course continue henceforth by, by that decision of not having more. Okay. Yeah. Rachel, your thoughts on the same? When you, know, when you become parents as teenagers and along the years you come to discover parenting is not for me and consequently yeah. you use that as a reason to abscond on your kids and mostly as a father figure. Yeah, I think that um, decision is mostly 
um, you know, contributed to because of the circumstances that you were in. Mm -hmm. When you were younger, most likely the circumstances around you, uh, you faced hardship, a level of hardship, and um, you know, you were, it, it was a rough season. I yeah. mean, and so now when you are older and you can now even make a choice to want to procreate again you feel like the memory that you have of being a dad or being a mother for example was it was a rough season so you most likely will not want to go back mm -hmm. and that is most likely the contributing factor around why most people would not want to be uh, fathers or because it's it's like a traumatic experience and yeah. you probably don't want to recreate that again mm -hmm. for sure but is that reason enough to to, to abscond abscond responsibility to the child that is already there absolutely not I mean regardless of whether you got your child when you're younger or mm -hmm. when you're older it is yours the thing is it is yours um, probably just it's, it's a, not a good excuse, um, but you're supposed to actually know that it is your responsibility. It just comes down to the responsibility. Something that aspect. I want to add on yeah. that is that uh, once you, you decide that you're going to be there in that life, you'd rather be fully in the life of that kid and play the role that you're supposed to play mm -hmm. rather than be there and you're bitter because we have such people who, yeah. who who decide to be there but their presence is not doing any good to the child. And mm. complaining all through. Exactly. Huyum toto, huyum yes. toto, huyum toto. Mm. All right, guys, we're talking about parenting and more specifically intentional fatherhood being present in your child's life as a man being the father figure being the man um role model for your child and of course addressing this whole situation this crisis of absentee fathers that we are seeing and especially with this millennial age do stay with us we want to take a very quick break but we'll be right back to continue with this discussion